me, that's the confidence to know that Jesus Christ is my fortress. In the great words of Martin Luther, a mighty fortress is my God. You know, we use that metaphor about building your house on sinking sand or building it on a beach for only the powers of the ocean to come in and take it away. You know, sometimes I have to laugh at those people that have those beachfront properties. And I don't mean to laugh at their demise when storms come. But it reminds me as a Christian, I'm sure glad I've got a house in Polk. Because I don't have to worry about these big tides coming in and washing away my house. In fact, most of us here in this county don't have much to worry about unless a flood would come through. But you know, it reminds me, where did I build my house? Did I build it on sand that will only get swept back out of the ocean? Or did I build my house on a rock that will stand mighty and firm? It can't be shuttered away. It can't be washed away. Yeah, you may come and attack it, but I sure have my angel to protect it, for those who remember my angel. But you know, things come and things go. But what happens when bad things happen in our life? Jesus is reminding us to come back to him. That we don't have to be afraid. But what is he asking us to do? He's asking us to wait. He's asking us to watch, to be patient, to hold firm to what you know. And in fact, it's funny. I, I was reading this article on the way back in a plane. And it talked about waiting and watching. And as I think about it, as we wait and we watch, we wait for our favorite football team to get that touchdown. And we watch intently as our hand goes in the potato chip bag waiting for the team to score something on that board. But that doesn't mean as Christians, watching and waiting means we become a couch potato. No, that's not what Jesus' point was in our gospel text today. And in fact, waiting and watching takes on a much deeper effect than that. Let's go over to Matthew 24. And we're almost done. Matthew 24, verse 36. Matthew 24, verse 36. Jesus reminds us about being watchful. Matthew 24, verse 36. And Jesus said, However, no one knows the day or the hour when these things will happen, that being the end of the world. Not even the angels in heaven or the Son himself only the Father knows. And in fact, when I hear people prophesying about when the end of the world comes, <clears throat> highlight this. Here's your answer. They must have forgot to read this part. Let's go on. Verse 37. When the Son of Man returns, it'll be like it was in Noah's day. In those days before the flood, the people were enjoying banquets and parties and weddings right up to the time that Noah entered his boat. People didn't realize what was going to happen until the flood came and swept them all away. This is the way it will be when the Son of Man returns. Two men will be working together in the field. One will be taken and the other will be left. Two women will be grinding flour at the mill. One will be taken, the other will be left. So be prepared, because you don't know what day your Lord is coming. But know this, a homeowner who knew exactly when a burglar was coming would stay alert and not permit the house to be broken into. You also must be ready all the time, for the Son of Man will come when least expected. You know, watching and waiting can be difficult. We live in a very fast-paced society, don't we? There's a lot of things going on around us. We don't, we don't want to miss anything. In fact, we want to see it all, don't we? I found this interesting illustration I wanted to read to you. 
In Jesus, God came into the world. He came to share in all the joys and the sorrow of life. He came to know what life is like and to show us what God is like. And because he came, because he lived, because he died and he rose again, he stands firmly and squarely with us in this life. And he reaches out to us, to you and to me, when our world seems to be collapsing and falling apart. His love comes close where the door, where the door stands open. His peace comes to those caught in a storm. His joy comes where faith encounters fear. His grace comes to those whose grace is spent. Stand firm. Don't lose hope. God is always 